on protection um because i know it's something that everybody worries about and cares about um there's lots and lots of ways of doing it um and lots of reasons why you might want it really or need it, or need it. yeah well one need in that case becomes a little bit sort of the same sometimes doesn't it although you can think you want it yeah that's actually true you can think you want it and actually you don't mm. actually whatever it is that you're scared of is is actually a good idea and there's also the opposite way around which is when you don't think you need protection and by golly you did <laughs> <laughs> oh yes so um yeah, it's the usual get out of your head and get out of your normal ideas about what, what you need protecting from and who needs protecting from what. Because they probably don't fit. No. So it's, a, it's a one of those things. We have, one of our students had a bit of a problem recently, um, which is sort of what set us off on, let's get some little courses together for deer trots. Um, <clears throat> She's out for a walk on her own. She, she always goes out for a walk on her own. She's been going out for a walk on her own for 20 or 30 years with a dog. Mm. And um, she knows the place like the back of her hand. And she's never had any trouble at all. But this time, <clears throat> she suddenly got a sort of, well, she didn't, the dog did, didn't she? Her dog put her hackles out. And, went, and so she turned around and got this really creepy feeling because there was this bloke um, absolutely Hammer Horror Films casting casting because apparently he was all in black. Uh, it's very strange. Yeah, a black suit. I'm not quite sure what she meant about black suit. We'll have to find that out. Well, uh, I, I've got this mental image of like the men in black with a... a so have I. Yeah. <laughs> um, and considering she was, um, you know, right out in the wilds, on the edge, on well, on the top of a hill, I think, um, yeah. in the woods, it was so like, hmm, you know, I don't normally see black suited blokes up there, possibly black, black leathers, mm, yeah, bikers, yeah, could be, they're usually not a threat. Um, well, if it was a track suit, not a, a suit suit, yeah, that would be that would be quite normal as well. But anyway, she got this really creepy feeling from him, and the dog wasn't happy either. <laughs> So <clears throat> if, if your dog's not happy, it's probably something to take notice of because animals do know. And um, so she sort of shot up the hill to the field where she was going and took a dive into the field, which was lovely. And she could get out of his way and out of his sight there. Um, so she got right over to the other side of the field and looked back. And there he was looking over the gate, looking for her. Mm. Now that is creepy. Yes. That is seriously like, is this book stalking me? What's going on? Um, so she asked Otherworld for some protection and help and um, kept very, very still. A bit like Bunny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, well, prey, prey animals have a tendency to, I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm not here. Yes. And I think she was doing that and anyway it all turned out all right he went away she didn't see him again at least she hasn't as far as i know and um but she was very you know she was really stirred up about it or who wouldn't be and so she posted it um in one of the students groups so it sort of set us off that yeah um she's got some ways of protecting herself but it it's the sort of thing you need to be able to do really fast. Yes. Because these situations, like, bang. You don't get a week's notice in advance in writing. <laughs> it's a nice no. call, but you don't. No. It's like that. You need it now. Yep. Yep. Which means, of course, you need to practice ahead of time. Yep. Um, and that's something we've both been thinking about. And uh, we've got various sorts of things that we're offering. But what's, what's the basic underneath yours, Fiona, the ones you're offering up? There's, there's, two, there's two real themes. One is being really familiar with and very able to manipulate your own aura. 
Yes. Being able to put energy into it, being able to stir your chakras up quickly. Yeah. So that you can put energy into your into your aura and make it the way you want it. Yeah. Yeah. Whether, you know, that's... I've got various ones that I use for burning off attachments if someone's attached energy to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can also um, make... It. There's one I do which is very useful for going quietly. Not quite invisible, but very unobtrusive. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Quite simply, you can fill your aura with a mist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people don't, just don't see you. Yeah. No. And even if they do see there's something there, they can't read you in the same way. No. No. So that's so quite a good hiding one. It's a very good hiding one, that. Yeah. If, if things get a little more risky, I'll actually sharpen up the outside of my aura so it's mirror-plated. Yeah. Which reflects energy off. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another very good way of doing it. And it also, that does help to make you invisible. It does. It makes you quite invisible, that one. I used to use this um, when I lived in London. And um, I quite often, um, partly for work, actually, uh, at the time, but I quite often, we, we work very late, and then and the three of us in the programming group would go down the pub and eat and, you know, relax and that. So I'd be coming home on the tube in London on the underground at about midnight, one o'clock, and there can be some very odd people around at that time. I mean this was twenty years ago and there were still very odd people around then. I think there always are. And then I've got sort of about half a mile walk, half three quarters of a mile walk from the tube station to the house. And so it was like I'm not here. Mm. And this invisible was really and and I, I've almost had people bump into me. Yes. Because they didn't exactly. know I was there. Um and you have to sort of duck quickly because they can't see you and you have to realise that. And it's a bit awkward if it looks like some bloke who possibly might have a knife in his belt. Um yeah. <clears throat> so you're sort of like <clears throat> you have to be very aware when you're inside invisible. Uh, uh, but it really does work. Uh, yeah. I learned that from um, one of my teachers, a lovely lady called Stephanie, who was very good at it. And um, Fiona knows this story. It's about her Doberman Pinscher. Oh, yes. 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 And um, she was teaching us all. We were in a lovely group, <clears throat> used to meet regularly. And um, her Doberman was like her familiar. Uh, he was absolutely gorgeous. I think he would have eaten anybody who tried to hurt her alive, but he just used to stand up with his paws on our shoulders and lick our faces, which was great. <clears throat> but there you go. That's how dogs greet. Um, so anyway, she kept him out of the room, which she quite often did if we were working, because, you know, animals always steal the show, don't they, Bunny? <laughs> and um, so she said, well, I'm going to show you something. She said, um, we're all going to stand in a circle and I'm going to put my cloak of invisibility on, which is how she called it. And then one of you over by the door is going to <coughs> let the dog in. So she did that. We did that. The dog came in and he loved coming in. He loved all of us, but it was mostly, where's mum? Where's mum? You know, and he went round the circle two or three times and she was standing in the circle. And he did not see her. Now that's a dog, not a person. Much harder to fool. And um, uh, she was she was that good. Uh, I've got that good now, but um, at the time I wasn't. I was still learning. Uh, but it was like, oh, right. Yes, it works. We believe you. <laughs> How'd you do that? And she, oh, then she took off the cloak. She just slipped it off. And you went, Mom! And so practically knocked her flying because she wasn't a very big woman and licked her to death. So she sat down on the ground with him and, and, and let him lick her. And, what were you doing, Mom? Why, why did you go away? Where were you? I was looking for you. you know? And it was all like this. It really was. It was so beautiful. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, it really does work. And um, I don't know. Well, I mean, Poppy and Abe would be all right if you tried it with them, but I think George would be Abe quite upset. Sorry? 
Abe is very good at being invisible himself. Well, he is indeed. That's yes. true. Yeah, so he's a good teacher. He is. And we might actually um, ask if he will come and help with some of these exercises because he's he is very, very good at that. And um, George the horse needs to learn how to do it himself. He yeah. tends to blunder about with his aura out 60 feet in all directions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you go, there's a horse. Uh, yes, there's a horse <laughs> in the distance. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's very, very useful being invisible. Mm. But it isn't always necessary. So no. it's one to use all the time. No, no, it isn't. And on the other hand, once you've learned that exercise, you can just dial it back. Yep. So that it's exactly where you want it. Yep. Yep. If you're doing a healing, it's useful to be able to just make sure that no energy is going to attach to you from the client, for example. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Without actually being totally invisible to them because you can't do anything. It doesn't help at all. No, they get quite nervous. <laughs> and it actually helps because um, since COVID, we've both been getting used to Zoom and working online and that sort of thing. And... Um, we're both doing one-to-one -one work on Zoom, which we always did before with somebody actually present with you. Yes. But it very often isn't a good idea nowadays. Um, and it's for me, I don't know what it has for you, but for me, it's really opened it up too, because we've got, I have had people from America and France and Australia and all this, sort of, and they'd never be able to get here in the normal sense of things, unless they're millionaires. Um, and then it's still not a good idea. But um, you still need that protection, you do. even if there's a screen between you. This is something that it takes a while for most people to get their heads around, doesn't it? Mm, it does. Distance, distance really doesn't exist in the energetic world. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You can send healing over vast distances. You can, you can do shamanic journeys over vast distances. Uh, it, it really makes no difference at all. No. In the same way, yeah. you need defences over vast distances. Yeah, because somebody can hit you through the screen just oh, as yeah. easily as they can if they're in the same room with you. Yes. Well, we've both experienced, uh, you know, people who've been able to do bad things from thousands of miles away. Absolutely. Without yeah, literally the other side of the world. Yes. Which takes us on to the second category of defence, which is how to defend your boundaries physically. Indeed. Indeed. The edge and of my field, for example. <laughs> or around the outsides of your garden. Yep. Um, or the area, really, in thinking about that, and I've, I mean, I've had to do it, because I live right out in the country, and so does Fiona. Um, and we've got our own property and its boundaries. But often, other world and the natural world want you to extend those a bit and I say well can you do us as well please yes and so you have to learn to organize those boundaries don't you and how far, you how far does the Crab Island of Britain indeed but your present with um, the craft how far does your boundaries sort of stretch roughly at the moment actually out to the edge of the, of the forest all around that's what I thought. So yeah. I mile in all directions. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is an awful lot bigger than the, the, the little field that I actually own on paper. Yeah. Well, you've got about six, seven acres, haven't you? I've got six acres. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm probably covering something like a couple of hundred. Must at least. No, it, it's probably more than that. It could well be. Actually, yeah, because it's like a mile it's or quite, two. It's quite hard to visualise an acre in circles. Well, it so, is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can sort of see it. Field, though I think it's roughly about that much. And you're still working to be out by an acre either way. Easily. Um, but I was sort of thinking, because you can actually, I mean, I, I've been there, so I, I can see it. Um, I mean, you can see in some direction, you can see two or three miles to the edge, can't you? Um, I would say roughly a mile, maybe a mile and a half in one or two spots. Well, I was thinking about the, the circle forest. Yes. Because that goes down a long way. And it goes all the way down to the main road. Yes. Indeed. That's probably three or four miles. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But it goes all the way out to the other side. The forest actually looks after itself. 
and I'm supposed to cover it up to the edge of the forest, and then the forest takes over. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, it is. So up to the edge. So what you are actually protecting is stuff that has been worked by humans. Yes. Although the forest has been too, but it seems to be more solid. The forest has been, but there are bits of that that never have been. Yeah, that's true. And I think they've spread out to cover the forestry plantation. Yeah, yeah. Which is sort of picked it up from them. And it, it's, it's mature Sitka spruce. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty good at looking after itself. Yeah. And so also, thinking about this, um, part of its protection, and I mean, um, the German bloke whose name I can never remember, the secret... Uh, Hidden Life of Trees, man. Um, he says that the mycorrhiza, really, it is, um, all linked together. And part of what they do is not just give each other food, is talk to each other and protect. Yes. Which makes perfect sense to us because there's Ellen's deer trods. Yes. Only a physical form. Absolutely. Fungus. So the forest looks after itself. It actually links up all around me. I live in a, a, almost a, a huge circle within a greater forest. Yeah, yeah. And um, enough of that is either rough ground that's unplowable mm -hmm. or actual forest mm -hmm. that it does form a complete circle mm -hmm. with plowland in the middle. So yeah. I, just, I just look after the plowland. So as part of the protection, do you actually connect to its energy as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because that's what I do here. Um, well, you have to. You can't, you can't take on protecting a piece of ground unless you are in communication with that ground yeah. and have its consent. Indeed. Because like, it's a lot bigger than you and it'll go... Pfft. Yes. <laughs> if it doesn't want you. <laughs> but it probably does, so don't worry about that. But I I use... I'm, only, I'm not the only one who protects it because, of course, the horses help. Indeed. And don't tell me... I'm sure Black Duck and her, her mates are in there. Actually, the geese. The geese are amazing. The geese actually do a lot of protection work. Yeah, they, and they always, I mean, they've even been the physical protectors for thousands of years, haven't they? So, yeah. And um, so I think, but I might be wrong, do the ferrets. Yes. The ferret, it, it's quite interesting, because it's sort of division of labour. The geese do things above the ground, the ferrets do things below it. Yes, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Right. It's not as if they're physically going down tunnels all over the place. No. <laughs> they have their cages and their playpens and they're perfectly safe. <laughs> but they, energetically, that's where they're, they're concerned with yeah. underground realms. Yeah. Whereas the geese take on the air and the land, the surface of the land. Yeah. And I sort of knit it all together and help. And the horses sort of join in and knit too. The horses join in and knit. They also. Horses, horses by nature are, are weird walkers. Yes. The weird, the weird is a, a network of threads that joins everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everything. The past, the present, the future, everything physical and, and non-physical. Yeah. Weather, the, the ground, the trees, the air, everything. Mm -hmm. And the horses by nature can manipulate this and they walk it. And as they move around the field and around the buildings, I can sense them sort of knitting mm -hmm. with the weird. Um, energetically, that that's what they're doing. They're they're busy holding it all together mm. with this network. Yeah. That's fascinating. I'm learning enormous amounts from you. <laughs> I feel a bit like a Bond villain sitting here stroking my white rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you <laughs> you are a little. I don't think you. I mean, that was a very beautiful cat. Yes. Um, yes. I've forgotten his name again, but he was he was such a good villain. He was absolutely yes. brilliant villain. Um, he was really good. I find a similar sort of thing, <clears throat> and I've got, mine are completely wild. I, I've only got a cat um, who actually lives with me in that sense. The rest of them live out there. And I used to, where I live, it used to be a forest. And then the farmers came along and cut it all down and <clears throat> turned the land into pasture. And uh, I think during World War II, like everywhere, they, they dug quite a lot of it up and tried to grow grain. It doesn't grow grain or anything like that very well. There is about yay much topsoil in most places. 
and then it's rock and stone and subsoil. Um, but it grows pasture brilliantly, it really does that well. <clears throat> so I'm in this sort of X forest, which isn't, I don't think, part of the long forest, but it might have been related to the long forest. The long forest, if you've read Cadfile, you'll know about the long forest. Yes. Um, it's all along Wenlock, Wenlock Edge. And it is long, it is miles, and it, it was always long and thin. Um, <clears throat> but going right back into prehistory, it's quite possible that the forest where I am might have been linked to it. I haven't investigated. Well, it, it would have been. It would have been. Almost there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we have got bloody great high hills in the middle, so it's possible there was a gap. Well, the tops of them might have been clear. Exactly. Yeah. But I haven't, well, investigated. I haven't investigated it properly. But we have deer around here, um, mostly roe and fallow, um, although there are, people are telling me they're red deer, but I'm not sure. I think they might be sort of seeker or seeker cross. There will be seeker hybrids. There are no pure red deer left on the mainland of Britain. And uh, is that true even on Exmoor? Well, the only place you'll find a pure red deer these days are the, the Hebridean Islands. Really? Yeah. 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 Because they've never they've never been crossed. Anyway. Yeah. No, no. So yeah, I, I was right about that. But um, whatever, there's still deer, and there's roe deer and fallow and these sitka crosses. But they they seem to be fewer. Mm. I mean, I was very used to lots of red deer on Exmoor. We don't have lots of red deer here, but we do have roe and we do have fallow, um, both of whom are very good. Um, they're another prey animal, of course, so they're very good at hiding and being invisible and not being seen. And they work, they really work with what to them is still the forest. Even yeah. if they come out into the fields, to them it's still the forest. And the other thing which totally fascinated me, and I've only discovered, I've only sort of really got to grips with it in the past years. We now have pine martins again in Shropshire. And they arrived here by themselves. Nobody actually brought some pine martins in and put them here. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but nobody did. They came of their own accord. Um, I think people still aren't quite sure whether they came down from your area or whether they came across from Wales, but there weren't many, if any, at all in Wales that not very long ago so we don't know anyway they're here and they're like your ferrets oh yeah quite closely related well they're all weasels weasels sorry weasels i call them even more than that in the old days the ferret was known as the fowl mart and the pine martin was known as the sweet mart makes sense because ferrets do have a tendency to pong just a time they do yes um i've never been that close with my nose available. Sweet martins don't smell as bad as, as excited ferrets. We have been that close to pine martins up in Scotland in Arthur Merkham, but there was a window between us, so scenting them wasn't that easy. But there wasn't that much scent around the, the places they came. The if, if we'd walked out and, and sniffed and it had been ferrets, we'd have known it was ferrets. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, with pine martins, there's no scent. When, yeah. they, when they go, they go, that's it. They leave the place clean. Which is another, for them, really good invisible thing, isn't it? Mm. Because most animals, or a lot of animals, really use their nose much better than we do. Oh, most. Um, yes. Some of them are particularly good at it. Most of the dog family is. We, we've got a cat again, I think. Yes. yes. Cats don't use their noses so much, but they do use them. But yes. cats are much more vis visual creatures, and they've got. There you go. Look at those eyes. Yes. Now she's really. She's got her eyes wide open, which means she's seeing everything, and she's quite excited. Mm -hmm. And like, what's going on? Don't tread on anything, darling. Please. She's about to stick her ears into the picture. <coughs> you probably all heard that. <laughs> so she'd come to visit, but their eyes really can dilate as you saw although she can do it a bit more and they use that when they're investigating and hunting and they get so much light in that's why they're really good night hunters yes 
and things that, you know, it's all off and it gets all that lighting. But when they're sort of feeling happy and quiet and I just want to doze off, right down and they've got these vertical slits. Yes. And that's your happy cat. Yes. And, and so it's it's the vertical slit eyes purring quietly to themselves. Yeah, and then yeah. they're fine. But so um, we were on pine martins, not cats. You see how they steal the show. Um, <laughs> but the pine martins, I, as soon as I came to Shropshire and knew about them, I joined the local wildlife trust pine martin group and I've got to know the people there. I've actually been out with them baiting camera traps and things like that and never actually seen one. I've seen the tracks. I've never actually seen one yet here, but you do. And I know where to go if I want to sit and look. Um, now they do seem to do a similar sort of thing to the ferrets, but they're, much, they're sort of half, they sort of reach under, but they don't go under. No, they're more tree animals. Yeah. But they also work a lot in the undergrowth. So they're yeah. sort of slithering along and I can feel them. They're sort of like between earth and air. Yeah. And linking it, but they're very tree animals. I mean, yes, they go up trees. I have seen very up trees, but they're really more tunnel and sort of critters. They are, yeah, yeah. Different sort of natural prey for rabbits and rats. So tunnels is where you find dinner. Mm, exactly. Whereas pine martin tends to be eating things in the middle of the ground. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they, they eat birds, um, they, they eat rabbits. Um, they eat rabbits. Uh, yeah, things like that, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they catch them, tend to catch them above the ground, more like she does. I mean, she's, yeah. in, she, she's hunting, if she's interested in, in catching herself a mouse. You know, she'll go into the undergrowth and, yes. and follow through. But she wouldn't go down, I mean, she'll go and sniff at the rabbit tunnel. Oh, yes, but the cats wouldn't go down. No, she won't, no. And she just sits there waiting for the rabbit to come out. And you sort of think, don't be daft. The rabbit can smell you, you idiot. <laughs> it's going out the other way. <laughs> but, um, no, um, that's sort of fine. But I was really interested in that. As you were saying about what the ferrets do, and what I've, I'm discovering still, what the pine martins do. But I can feel them, like, knitting. Yes. As you feel... Your critters knitting. Yes. And it's fascinating. And the pine martins seem to be getting quite a network together. Um, what for you is the weird, what for me is the deer troughs, but it appears to be the same thing. Um, that is really networking all the old places they used to be. And they are getting around to more places. And I touch into their network. Yes. Uh, I was just reminded that ecologists speak of an ecological web. Indeed. And there it is. Yep. Yep. All the animals going around, mixing their energies and winding together. And it, it's, it's something that we've, as humans, we've, we've pulled ourselves away from and we shouldn't have done. No. no. We need to find a place in there. Big mistake that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we can, I mean, and, and so many people, and probably you if you're watching, um, you want that back. Yes. I, I, I keep, back on that one-to-one -one thing again, I keep getting that in one-to-ones in for me. Yes. And um, you probably do too. We want to be part of the web, um, as we were. I was talking with another uh, witch friend the other day. And we would we actually talk, we actually started talking about cooking because she she's a baker witch and you know one of her big things is food and all that comes into it and how you use food and that's one of her big spells things but she's a witch anyway she's a hedge witch and um, we were saying you know there is this food web as well. And we started getting really sort of excited about that. In fact, we want to talk about it again, so we will. But there is this web, which is the weird for you. The deer trods. And the deer trods for me. The web, the web of life. Yeah. It's been known by many, 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 many names. We know what it is when we meet it. And the energy web that physicists use. Yes. That, you know, in the stars and how it, how it works across. And if you look at their maps of um, 
dark energy and dark matter, which are different things. Um, but you look at them and they do look like a web because they have lines of energy from different points that yes. meet up and they will connect. Um, so we are getting it in the face a lot at the moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but connecting to the web is a really good way of, use, of, of protecting yourself. Yes. And your place and your boundaries. So you're offering web connections. I'm offering a couple of web connections. And um, they will come up on the Yes. In due course. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm going to likely touch on another subject here, which really takes several years to work it. Go on. Which is the use of thought forms and visualisations. Ah, that's a good idea. Well, we ought to talk about thought forms anyway. Yes. Because there's something that you will need protection from. Yes. Because despite what some courses tell you and some reading tells you, other world really do have better things to do than mess you about. Yes. They're not a gang of boys at the lamp. Yes leaning on a lamppost, trying to have some fun scaring old ladies or something. Mm. They re they're not interested. They're not up for that. There's too much to do. But thought forms. Thought forms. Thought forms usually come from humans. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they can be useful. Yes, and we all do use them, actually. Yeah, absolutely. But they can also get away from you. And you can also deliberately make them go away from you. You can deliberately set them on somebody else. And a I, lot of I people never have, have, but I've had them set on me. And a lot of people actually do do that. Mm. And it comes ever so subtly, doesn't it? You know, you, somebody annoys you, I'll have them. Yes. That was a thought form. Yes. Thought forms and curses shade into each other quite neatly. Very well. This is just a more, more formal version, really. Yeah, and it's more considered. And if you're, yes. if you're making a curse, you mean it. You know you mean it. Well, you can do a thought form quite accidentally. Most people do. my first thought form I did do accidentally. <laughs> Most people do. Yeah. But I used to live in a particularly rough bit of Aberdeen. Yes. Um, walking home late at night. Yeah. I conjured the image of a white wolf to walk next to me. Which was great, except it didn't go away. <laughs> uh, I, I fixed that in a, in a slightly complicated way, where actually in soling the, the, the thought form. You. With, I, I actually ensouled it. I, I ah, found, there's a lot of people going to say, what? Yes. What I did was I asked for help, mm -hmm. and the spirit of an actual white wolf who had died a couple of years beforehand at, at Aviemore, the, the white wolf. I know the one, yeah. Yeah. And he came and said, I will take this thought form and use it as a body. And that will keep it safe from doing any damage. Which was and absolutely amazing. But it did definitely teach me that I was out of my depth at the time. Yes. 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 So and I was very lucky that this wolf did come and help. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, a thought form that you, you conjure without meaning yeah. does draw energy from you. And it also it goes around again, and you don't know how to get rid of it. And it also it's goes around it. looking for energy in other people. Yes. And it sucking them out. It was a psychic bumper. Yeah. 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 So this 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 white wolf came and um, inhabited it, the form, ensouled it, mm. became sold within it, mm. uh, and took it over from me. And that meant that there was no more energy to draw, mm. and the wolf wasn't going to go off and do anything horrible to anyone else. Being a far more experienced shaman than any of us, yes, indeed, yeah, and, and indeed, that particular wolf is still part of my gang, mm. it shows up on occasion when I need to help the wolf. Sort. Yeah, I met him too. He was at the Abernathy Wildlife Park, not the current pack, the previous pack, and he was the alpha male. Mm. And, um, well. They used to, I don't know they still do, they had this tower you could go and watch in. Yes. 
And so I was up there and he came out with the bushes and he just turned and looked at me and he got my eyes and I was like, Yes. And he's, he's an amazing wolf. He is. And he is still around. I still see him occasionally, but he's not part, really part of my gang. He's just, oh, hi, I remember you. Yes. Um, you're okay, you know. Um, yes. Um, and that. But no, I know he's part of your gang. So you really do have to be careful because otherwise thought forms, they gallop around and they draw energy off anybody or anything. I mean, if you, you've got any nasties around, because Bunny's not as fit as he might be, they draw from Bunny. Yes. All the horses, all the dogs. Or for yeah. me, they draw from Kevin or Paul, my husband. I, I have encountered thought forms which have attached themselves to a natural energy source in the, in the landscape and become yes. haunting. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're actually quite difficult to get rid of. Yeah. There's one not very far from us. So when you come down, we must go out and have a look at it, actually. Um, it's the clean, the clean yeah. hill, and um, whoa, and it's a huge hill, and it's got this weird shape rock on the top of it. At least it is, depending on which angle you see it from. And everybody, just even ordinary trippers, will say, "Funny place." I know there's lots of funny things that happened there, and it's been yeah. used by gangs for at least a thousand years and probably more. Um, it also comes up in Cadwell. I think she put a, an outlaw baron on top of it. Yes, she does. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah. And, um, and it is weird. Mm. It is seriously weird. Um, and that is something from a long time ago. And I, I think it's thousands of years ago, a couple anyway. Um, that got there, but I don't know how. Mm. So, and I think I'd rather go up there with you. I, I think I need a little company if I'm going up there. <laughs> there, are, there are places like that. And sometimes uh, this is another place where it's very easy to get out of your depth. Because sometimes you're not supposed to do anything about these places. I uh, don't as a, as a novice or a fairly inexperienced worker, you, you tend to sort of fall in going, I can fix this. It may not need fixing. No. And it certainly probably doesn't need you fixing it. And um, if you try, you'll probably get eaten by it. Yes. And um, as you all know, we're, we're both quite experienced and have met a lot of things. And I'm still like, I mm, think I want somebody I, I can rely on to come up and hold my hand while we go up yes. there. <laughs> yes. So I shall wait for that. Uh, it does attract, mind you, the other thing about it is, it is so attractive, despite its weirdness. I mean, it really pulls the crowds there. It's a little bit like Piccadilly Circus going up there. So I mean, yes, but it really pulls people. How much energy is it pulling out of the people it pulls? Mm -hmm. That's another question. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And um, and and before you go in there, you put some protection on yourself. Absolutely. And that is a good use of the things you've mentioned and uh, the one that I use, which I call high pressure. Because mm. um, it's like in the weather system, if there's a high pressure there, the low pressure actually can't get in. and It has to move away and then the low pressure can come in. Yes. So you, there's a way of actually filling yourself or your or whatever you call it as a high pressure and asking it to be a high pressure and keeping things out. So that will be one of the ones that will go up. Um, one thing you're gonna need, I mean, you were talking earlier about the chakras and filling yes. the chakras. Now, they're good, but you will be very well advised to do some of the other short courses first yes. so that you actually know what you're dealing with yes. and not something just out of a book. I, I would actually start with the Earth Sun exercise and work up from there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, that then. We'll be doing, we'll, we will be doing a course that discusses what the chakras are. Indeed. And um, it's, it's more than worthwhile getting in there and learning. Yeah. Because, yeah. like anything, you know, you can walk into a kitchen and pick up a knife, but if it's the wrong yeah. knife, you're going to cut the wrong thing with it. Or, you know, 
try slicing bacon with a vegetable knife, are you going to be all there all day? You need to know what it is you're working with. You need to know your tools. Indeed. And it's really worth it. But it's like everything comes from, from this, this earth sun. Mm. That's a pain, I know. But, you know, it's a vertical axis. Uh, you know, sun, earth, earth going up, sun falling down, well, being, being pulled down. And you in the middle. Yes. And things like the six arm cross grow out of that. And then the interface grows from the six arm cross, which grows from the uh, uh, sun. Yes. So it really is fundamental to so many things. Indeed. And when you start working with the chakras, of course, the energy that comes in at the crown and out at the root and in at the root and out at the crown is earth sun energy. How it actually goes through you is quite another matter. <laughs> <More complicated. laughs> The, the common or garden vertical actually is not how it actually works. You can, you can do a sure. certain amount with that, but it's, it's very limited. Yes, it is. It, it's right at the sort of top level, basic, just yes. an idea of what, you know, that they're there. Yes. But it's you not working. You can do a certain amount with that, and it's better than nothing. Are you sorted? Right. I, I don't know about this. I think I might want to dig. <laughs> but there you go so yes it's very important and to get the basics going yes. and even if you think you know them even if you've worked with my books or me or fiona before um go back and repractice. you you only get good at this with time there are no quick fixes yeah and it's just time and repetition and practice and keep going back and doing it again and again and learning to do it anywhere, you know, there you are, you know, you're in the shower and so, yeah. oh, I can do the earth sun in the shower, or, yeah. you know, having a wash, um, or I'm driving the car um, and I'm not doing 100 miles an hour on the motorway, uh, not at first. Um, actually, actually, I prefer to do it 100 miles an hour on the motorway than round a roundabout. But uh, if you're going to do that, do it when you're parked in a lay-by to start with. Yeah, please. <laughs> and then go, go up and down your own, so, you know, go from your, your garage to your front gate and do it uh, in the car and then maybe go up a quiet road, you know, yes. uh, and do You're it. Working your way up slowly. Yeah. It's like, don't ever try and, you know, the old one, don't run before you can walk. Yes. But don't, because you will go flat on your face, you'll trip over something and something will happen. And if you are trying to do it and it's your very first time doing the earth sun in the car and you are doing 100 miles on the motorway the likelihood of you crashing is about 99.99999999 percent yes so just because you're doing the earth sun doesn't mean to say you are protected in the sense of you can be an absolute idiot and do things yes i'm <sighs> It, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a joke, really. I used to hang out with reenactors, and they used to say, "Here's your sword, nice <laughs> sharp. Here's how you use it. Now, don't cut your horse's ears off." Oh, just because you've got a sword and you know how to use it, you still can make mistakes. And you, this is again, it's walking between the worlds stuff again, isn't it? Yes. And only when you're about, well one, two, three years old, do people sort of grab you by the back of the collar before you walk out under that bus? Mm. You've got to learn that you don't live a charmed life and you are not invincible and you are not indestructible. Yes. So you've got to take normal human things like looking both ways before you cross the road and making sure it's clear and clear enough that you, at your speed, can get across. Yeah, the Earth Sun will not stop an oncoming lorry. Not for anybody. You have to watch the road. Yeah. They just say, shame that. Yeah. And they say that because, and this is something else that, people can take a little time to get to this incarnation you're currently living is not your only one 
you get lots and lots of chances. It's not your only chance. And you can screw them up. And very often it is a case of them. Let's try that one again next life. Yeah. Or let's not do it like that next time. <laughs> a different way of doing it. Learn, learn a different way. <laughs> Make yeah. a different mistake. Why don't you? <laughs> it's all sort of experience. So protection works, but it won't work unless you've taken some human precautions as well. You have to live in both worlds and work right through. Yes, and I think somebody is saying it's time I went out to walk. Yes, it probably is. It probably is. I've been and it's a rabbit too long, and she wants to go. And it's also time that I got on because I've got to go into Shrewsbury today. Yes. Oh, I'm going to do some, um, hopefully, some interesting things today because we're both um, cab file uh, addicts and love the books. And we're actually going to park in the Abbey car park today. Yes. So we'll get a quick look around. And the Abbey isn't there, but, you know, there's where it was and all this sort of thing. It's also next to the Wildlife Trust, so I'll probably be able to pop in yeah, and say hi. And, say and um, I'm going to have my hair cut. And I discovered the other day that where my hairdresser is, is in um, is it St. Mary's Street. And um, then I realised that Hugh Berenger's castle it's just up from there. Ah, right. It doesn't look like a Norman castle anymore. It looks like a sort of 17th century house. Yes. Old. But at least, I, I hope, and um, Paul's thinking, we'll probably go and go up there, um, that we can go and actually stand in the site and feel back. Yes. So we're going to have a little bit of a, a time trip, feeling back to see how it is, and, uh, which would be quite nice. Cause... You're going to pick up quite a lot of bloodshed and violence. That's that's those are that saying. <laughs> and there's something that I must find out, and I have never found, managed to find it yet. You remember Godric's Ford and Polesworth, um, the nuns at Polesworth. Lots of exciting things happen there. Yes. I can't find it. I know it's supposed to be in the edge of the long forest. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the edge of the long forest as it was in 1100. Exactly. Um, and not too far from Shrewsbury Abbey, but I've got to work on this. I've got to go and read another book now to see just how long it took Cadfile to get here and then how long it took him to get there, which was, is to the, the to Godric's Ford. And thinking about his feet and, and you know, walking and all that sort of thing. And I might be able to get at least a sort of circle about, I think it's in here somewhere. And of course, it's got to be on a stream. It does need to be on a stream, a stream deep enough to need a ford. Indeed. And one that is actually going to catch winter, winter rain, because that happens in, in one of the stories too. Yes. Um, and it floods and wipes, yes. nearly wipes somebody away. Um, so I, I think I'm going to have a bit of an adventure today. Mm. And um, I will let you all know how it happens. That will be very interesting. And um, we'll look forward to, I think, a scaled version of protection exercises with sort starting, of like go do this thing. one until you've done that yes we'll, we'll start at the bottom and work up yeah and um, please take notice of what we say i know we're a pair of antiquated old bats and that sort of thing but we have been there done that got the t-shirt and licked the stamp um, we, we've made the mistakes we can say we do the same we, we we'd rather you made different ones yes it's more fun it's much more fun Okay then, people. Right. Okay. Um, we'll see you next week. Bye okay. for now. Bye-bye.